Okay guys, let's install this Optima compact alarm panel together. The first thing you wanna do is unscrew these two screws here and take the lid off and take the front cover off so you're left with this exposed area here. Then undo these bits here and pop out the circuit board so you've just got the back plate. Once you've done that, put the circuit board somewhere safe and just have the back plate. Now we're going to mount this to the wall. I'm going to assume you've already ran your cables and your cables are in place. Mark out on the wall where you're going to drill, there, there, and there, and mark the wall. Drill out this one here for the middle, and then you can just hook on your control panel, and then you can drill out these after. Pop your cables through the slot, so they're into the panel. Pop that on there. Now drill through there, so you can secure the panel in properly. Once you've done that, get your red roll plugs and put them into the holes that you've drilled out. Now we're ready to secure our panel onto the wall. Now before we actually get to mounting the panel, you'll see here a knockout. This is where our, our mains cable is going to come through. So drill a section here so that you can bring your mains cable into the panel. Now that you've drilled out your screws and put your roll plugs in the wall, we've got this one up here as well, your cables are in place and you've got a hole ready for your mains cable, it's time to fix this back plate to the wall. So feed in your mains cable through here, and guys, please make sure it's dead. I'm not looking to get anyone an electric shock. Feed your alarm flex cable through that hole there, and hook the panel on just like that. Now screw in these three screws to secure the panel. Okay, now we've got your alarm flex, your mains cable, and your AC cable from the transformer. First thing to do, just screw your alarm flex into the mains there, earth to earth, blue to blue, which is neutral, and live to live, which is brown to brown. You can make life a little bit easier for yourself if you just pop off the mains there, just so you can see better to put your terminals into the correct place. After you've screwed them into place, pop it back onto its housing just there. So now that's out the way, all good. Let's get on with the circuit board. Get the PCB and you'll see two lines here, a white line there and a white line there. And what they line up to are these two parts here. Okay, so you're just gonna wanna pop them in to those two parts there. This bit here will then pop through the circuit board and this bit here, and then simply push the panel back into place until you hear it click. Now on this panel, we have a bell cable, a hall cable, a kitchen cable, a landing cable, and a bed panic alarm cable. So just to run through the bits in here, you've got your two AC cables coming from the transformer. Pop these back into the AC terminals just here, since you took them out earlier. Don't worry about the polarity. AC voltage works both ways, so there isn't a left and a right terminal for these. Now we have a remote keypad section here. So we're gonna add keypads onto this panel. The keypads will be wired into here. There is a tamper just down here that has a link in it. Keep that link in it if you're not planning to wire on a keypad. I'll wire a keypad on another video, a separate video for this. For the moment, we're just gonna do everything on here. So bell cable we'll put over here because here are the bell terminals and zones. 128 across there, a panic alarm zone just there by itself, which is quite handy because it means you've got, you know, more zones onto the panel, so it is good. And then we have speaker, put hall, kitchen, landing, bed PA, and bell. So we've got our cables into place. Now, you haven't got much room working on a compact alarm panel. This is always the same with all of them. So what you wanna do is after we've wired everything in nice and neat, we're gonna to wanna to push the cables up behind the circuit board so we've got plenty of room here left for our backup battery. So if you're installing this and you've got loads of cable in here and you're thinking about keeping loads of it just in case of moving the panel and you think at a later date, you're gonna to struggle to get a 2.1 amperage hour battery in here. You can get smaller batteries than that, but I don't recommend you use a smaller one, okay? 2.1 fits in there, great. So you've got your tamper circuit just there as well for your global tamper. Let's get to wiring this. We're gonna start, our hull is zone one. Peel back your cable, 
Make sure all your cables are labeled as they are. We're not gonna be using the brown and orange, so we've twisted them round the bottom of the cable. Don't cut them away. You never know when you need spare cores in future. So this is a PIR, a passive infrared for this haul. We've got our zone cables here with blue and yellow, our tamper circuit on green and white, and our power, which will be red and black. That will be the same on our hall, the same on our kitchen, the same in our landing. They are both three passive infrareds. So do the same job on all three of them, separate the cables, twist the inner cores together, and you should be left with something that looks a little bit like this. Go ahead and put the blue and yellow into the three zones. So hall, the kitchen, then landing, for example. Pinch off the ends. Don't worry if you struggle with that at first, by the way. I remember when I started, I could just kept snipping the cable off. It takes a little while to get used to that, but you'll get it quite quickly. There we go. And we have our three zones wired in there. Just give them a little tug after you've done them to make sure, as my electrical tutor used to say, you've got nice, tight, juicy connections. Now on this, we've got a bed PA, a bed panic alarm. So because we've got a separate zone for this, we don't put a panic alarm into 128. These are reserved for you know, door contacts, passive infrared, shock sensors, all other things. We have our own specific zone for a panic alarm. So take out the link in the PA section, wrap around the cables you don't need. So in a PA, you don't need power. So you'd only have the ones available of your zone and your tamper. So in our case, blue and yellow and green and white. These are quite common um, color codes to use as well, guys. So these are quite good to get in the habit of using these ones. Pop blue and yellow into PA and tighten that up. Now, if you had more than one panic alarm, you would wire these in a daisy chain, the same as you do a global tamper circuit. Next stage, we'll get our power ready for our motion sensors. So we'll put them together. Okay, they're all separate right now. Get them to the same height, okay, and grab all three of them together, okay? And then pinch down a couple of inches down and unwind all of them. Now, once you've unwinded them, put the blacks together and put the reds together of that two inches and twist. This is just a way to keep it all nice and neat and tidy. It just all fits together nicely if you do it like this and twist together there as well. So it's going into our aux, which is just there in the middle of the panel. Pinch half an inch down from the end of that and just unwind them. Then that's it. Pinch off the ends to expose the metal. Twist that together. Look at that, perfect, perfect. Then we wanna do the same with the red as well. Pinch off, twist together. And these are gonna fit perfectly into our aux terminals. So we've got zero volts there. Sometimes this is also labeled negative, guys, just so you know. Positive and negative are DC voltage, depending on what panel you've got. So black's into there, red's into there, and tighten them up. And remember, tight, juicy connections are what we want. There we go, they're not going anywhere. Now it's time to wire our tamper circuit. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you may know how to do this already, but if not, no problem, I'll show you now as well. So, you get the cables, and you can snip off the ends, and we're gonna create a daisy chain. So, get two of the green and whites, okay, two separate cables, see the green of this cable there, and the white of a different cable, and just twist them together, just like that, okay? So now, look what you've got. Okay, one cable is joined with another one. And the simple thing to next do is, you've got the end of that cable there, snip back the next one, and join the green and white together there. And then look what you've got, you're making a chain. See that there? So you then do that again with the next cable. And by the end, you have this. Snip off just a small amount of the two ends of your daisy chain, because they're the two ends that are going into the terminals of your tamper, just there. One in there, and one into the other side. 
usually on past videos, what I've told you to do with these ends, you see where it's exposed there, is to get a piece of chalky block and wire it into there. However, on this panel, it's quite small, okay? You haven't got much space. So ideally, what I'd like you to do, if you can, is solder these with a soldering gun and put tape around them, okay? If you can't do that, get some small chalky block and we'll try and make this fit behind the panel after, but it's gonna be a bit tight. But just in case you don't have a soldering iron, I'm gonna try and show you how you can do it without, because to be honest, it's unlikely you've got a soldering iron. Okay, we wired our zones, wired our power, wired our panic alarm, wired our tamper circuit. Now we just need to wire our bell. Now I have actually done a video on how to wire an external sounder as well, which I will link in the video description too. So if you're doing your panel and you're not sure about the sounder yet, but you have put a cable out there for the sounder, I'll walk you through exactly how to do that. Bell positive, which we use in general, is red. So let's tighten that up. Bell negative, we use black. For strobe, it has strobe positive and negative here, but strobe positive doesn't get used in modern day anymore. Just strobe negative, which we use for green. Pop into there and tighten up. Yellow into T, that's our tamper circuit on an Optima panel. And blue into A, which is the zero volts for our sounder on an Optima panel, also known as hold off. Right guys, if you've got this far and you've wired it all in, you've done great. On other panels, on the zone, you need to put a link across zones that aren't being used. You can do that if you want to, but you don't actually need to on an Optima Compact. We can program them out in the actual programming phase. So what you need to get as well is a 2.1 amperage hour battery, which looks like this. Now obviously this one's old, but this is just for the example purposes of the video always date your battery because these need to be changed every five years. If you don't change them every five years, you might think it's fine, but it ain't. It's breaking your panel. So, sick, 25. So I'll know to change that in June 2030 if we haven't all been blown up in nuclear war. Let's see. So now before we put the battery on, we're just gonna tuck our cables back. So unclip PCB board again, and push up your cables behind squeeze them all in so they're out the way push that into place and we're just going to push the chalky block just there and we're still going to have room then get your battery pop your battery leads on and all being well if you've done it and left yourself plenty of space it should be no problem you should have plenty of room to fit your 2.1 amperage hour battery don't use one of those tiny ones guys you need you need to have a decent battery in there for it to last if the mains goes down Make sure to wire in your battery terminals. So you've got the red that goes to positive and your black that goes to negative. And now it's time to put your cover onto the panel. And now you're getting close to applying the mains power. Put the top lid on, make sure everything lines up and you'll see these leads here. These are for your speaker terminals. And tighten that off. Then get the bottom portion, click it in underneath and just close over the panel. Remember, don't try not to lose these, so cover these with your thumbs as you're flipping the panel over. Tighten this up. Now it's time to apply your mains voltage. Power it up at the mains. And press 0, 1, 2, 3 to cancel the initial alarm as that's the default user code. Now press X twice, and as long as you've wired everything correctly, you've got no lit light here, you've got no tamper light there, you've got no panic alarm light there, and that's your mains power light. So that's all sitting there exactly as it should. So let's go through the programming together so I can show you how to program this system. The first step you're gonna to need to do is go into the engineer mode. That's default on this panel to 9999, as it is with all Optima sensors. You'll see the SOS light come on, and the power light's on as well, but this now means we're in the engineer's mode. First thing, to change a code, if you press number eight, if you want to change the user code, press number one, and then put in your new user code. Let's say four, three, two, one. The system will register it and beep to let you know. Now, if you want to change the engineer code, press eight. Oh, sorry, press X, press eight press four, 
and put in the new engineer code, which will make five, six, seven, eight, for example. And we've now entered a new user code, which I think was 4321, and an engineer code of 5678. Let's hope that I don't forget that. Press the X once to come out of that menu. Now we're going to set up our programs, and that's setting up our zones. For that, press the P, and we're going to want to press the number 1, because we're setting up program 1. Now, on our used zones, we want to put on the zones that we want to use. That means we want to enable certain zones. We want zones 1, 2, and 3 because we're using them as the hall, the kitchen, and the landing, and the PA is automatically on with it being in the PA zone. So we've enabled those three now. The rest can stay off. That's why we didn't need to put the link in. Next, what we want to do is go into time zones. We do this by pressing number two. Now we've pressed number two. We only want one zone as our time zone in our case, the hallway. So we turn off two and three. Now press X to come out of there. Next, we want to change our inhibit zones. So number three, num now inhibit zones are zones that are gonna see movement after the entrance zone has started. So let's imagine our kitchen is going to see us after we've walked in through the hall before we've put the code in. We're gonna wanna make our kitchen an inhibit zone. After that, we're gonna wanna press number four, and this is where we put our time in and it, uh, for our entry and exit, and it's multiplied by 10. So for 30 seconds, you put in zero, three. Press X, then press five. And for our entry, we're gonna put in zero, three again. Press X, press six. We're gonna choose our exit mode, which we'll want as number one, which is timed. I know it lights up two there, but it's actually on number one for time there. It's a little bit of a weird thing about this panel. Press X to come out of there. Now we've set up our time zones, our use zones, what we're gonna use, and the rest are on automatic intruder zones, which will be immediate alarms. So if we come out of here now, press X all the way out to this light up, and you want to do some testing on the panel. So if you press P and put in your user code, which are, was it 4321? Yeah, that middle one there will light up. Now to do some testing, press zero, we'll start a walk test. All these zones will be out, and you'll be able to go around and walk test the panel, and then these will flash to let you know that the system's seen them. Press X to come out of there. To do a bell test externally, press number one and then press number one again and it will trigger your external bell. Press number one to cancel that. Press number two and it will do your strobe. Press number two to cancel that. Number three will do your internal speaker and then that is your testing on there. And your system should now be good to go. There are many other aspects you can program into the panel, but to be honest, those are the main ones. And if you do that and you put your wire it all in correctly and then you program it in like that, you'll be able to use your system and it'll be good to go. If there's anything specifically you'd like me to cover that I haven't covered in here about this panel, I'd be more than happy to go through it. Just let me know in the comments and I'll run through it for you. Any questions, I'm happy to help. Thanks guys, see you on the next one.